Hey guys, what's up? My name's Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. And today I got my Apple Watch Series 6. Here it is in all of its product red glory. Now, one of the big features that Apple is advertising is the SPO2 sensor. This is brand new to the Apple Watch Series 6. And this sensor allows the watch to get your blood oxygen saturation levels. Uh, and this is the same kind of technology or sensor that you may have seen in a hospital or doctor's office with one of these little things that they put on one of your fingers. You know, they'll do something like that, maybe put it on your thumb, like that. And um, this is a medical grade SpO2 sensor. Uh, so this is very, very accurate at getting your pulse and your blood oxygen saturation levels. So what I wanna do today is find out just how accurate the Apple Watch Series 6 is when it's compared against something medical grade. Let's find out. So the first thing you'll notice is once you hit the start button, it's gonna take 15 seconds in order to get your SpO2 reading, your blood oxygen saturation levels. The same thing is actually true with the medical grade sensor. There is a 15 second latency that goes on. And you'll notice here, however, that the Apple Watch was unsuccessful in measuring. And so that could be that my, my uh, strap is too tight or too loose or that the sensor isn't placed at the right location on my wrist. And so I went ahead and tried again. Now I didn't have any issues as you'll see here with the medical grade sensor. It was able to get my pulse and uh, blood oxygen saturation levels each and every time. But you will notice here that I do have some issues with the Apple Watch sensor. Two unsuccessful measurements, even though I'm resting my hand comfortably against a table, trying to minimize movement and trying to make sure that the sensor is uh, underneath my wrist placed at the location where they're recommending. Apparently third time is the charm for the Apple Watch because I did get a proper reading on the third reading here and it says 96%. And that was only 1% difference than what the medical grade sensor was giving me at that precise moment. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that the Apple Watch is taking a quick snapshot of your blood oxygen saturation levels unlike the medical grade sensor which is constantly giving you a reading in real time and it varies you know a percent or two so it's just important to know that the apple watch is giving you a snapshot reading as opposed to a real-time constant reading uh, that might be important for some people to, to know and understand now on this last reading you'll see that the medical grade sensor is reading out at 95 94 percent because i had been holding my breath for about a minute up to this point i want wanted to see if the Apple Watch would be able to detect the diminished oxygen levels in my bloodstream. And let's see what it says. There we go, 94% agreed spot on with the medical grade sensor. So within about one to 2%, the Apple Watch sensor is actually pretty accurate. So you can trust the readings coming from the Apple Watch Series 6. That said, it's also a little bit finicky. It's a little bit sensitive to movement and motion, and I tried to take my reading today while driving in my car, and I had my hand just kind of sitting on an armrest, and that little bit of road motion was just enough for the sensor to not work. Additionally, I tried, you know, just holding my hand still like this, and even that was enough movement to make the sensor not read correctly. Even taking, as you saw in the video, even taking readings while resting my hand flat on a table, uh, it didn't always give me um, an accurate reading. Sometimes it would spit back some sort of error message saying that it was not able to read. So uh, it's not exactly super, super reliable. With the Apple Watch Series 6, you just get one quick reading and that's it. Whereas with a sensor like this, you can get a constant reading as to what your blood oxygen saturation levels are. So it's not that the Apple Watch sensor is inaccurate. It's just very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Temperamental. You have to be extremely still. It's only going to give you a snapshot of just one particular moment. It's not going to give you a constant reading. And so, is it helpful? Yeah, absolutely. It's helpful for someone who's sick or maybe has respiratory issues. It would definitely be helpful to be able to quickly 
find out what your blood oxygen saturation levels are. However, if you're wanting to do a constant monitoring of blood oxygen saturation levels, you should pick up an SpO2 sensor like this, you know, from Amazon. So uh, I think this sensor here cost me $40 or something like that. And, uh, you know, much more reliable, much more accurate and gives constant readings. So if you're someone who wants, you know, the best of the best in terms of SP SpO2 blood oxygen saturation levels, then you should definitely pick up a dedicated sensor. If that's just something that you want to do occasionally or have the Apple Watch just check periodically, automatically while you're sleeping or throughout the day, then the built-in sensor on the Series 6 is gonna be fine for that. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and check back on this channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot of different tests on the new Apple Watch Series 6. I'm gonna be having a full-fledged fitness review uh, coming probably in about seven to 14 days. So stay tuned for that. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.